Once again, welcome friends. We are going to study a different unit, a new unit that is hematology. So in this unit, all that we will do is with the blood and its components. So blood, as we know, is a very uh, versatile uh, fluid or it's, it's actually a tissue, right? It consists, it, it is a liquid tissue of the body. It has, uh, it, it's kind of got uh, uh, not just uh, fluid, it's not only the fluid component that is present in the blood, but there are many cells which are present in the blood, cells are very, which are vitally important for the body. We know that blood plays an, very, an immense role um, in, in being a transporter of nutrients, a carrier of nutrients, a carrier of oxygen, a carrier of waste products, a carrier of uh, the hormones which are secreted, right? So basically the entire transport system of the body would depend upon, uh, uh, most mostly would depend upon the uh, functioning of the blood. So blood contains both the cellular components as well as the fluid components, right? So the study of the blood in detail is called as hematology. So this would be the term that is going to be used uh, for this unit. So we are going to look into the fundamentals of hematology principles. Let's check into the composition of blood. So if you look into whole blood, okay, a blood which has not been centrifuged, which has not been separated into its components, a whole blood. So it, that would be uh, that would be made of the eryth erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells. Then we have the leukocytes, the white blood cells, and the platelets platelets which would help in uh, or it has the clotting factors right and also the plasma so erythrocytes leukocytes platelets and plasma so we will look into each components in detail as we move forward in this unit now uh, when we separate the blood uh, by centrifug centrifugation we see a buffy coat ki kind of a buffy color uh, which would which would be like a yellowish color okay uh, an, op an opaque line um, line so when we separate blood into its components by means of centrifugation process, so we will come across a buffy coat. So buffy coat would be like a, a light yellow colored um, separate particle, okay, like a colloidal solution which will be seen. So that is mainly consisting of the platelets and the leukocytes, okay. So the cell components of the blood will be separated out in the buffy coat layer. We can have two, uh, two components of the blood depending upon the presence and the or the absence of the coagulation factors so one is the plasma the other is the serum so let's look into what is plasma so plasma is the liquid portion of unclotted blood okay so if you remove out all the cell components whatever remains would be ideally the plasma provided that the uh, coagulation factors is also present so plasma is the liquid portion of the blood which has the coagulation factors. So liquid portion of unclotted blood will, will be uh, consisting of the plasma. Now let's look into what is serum. So serum is the liquid portion which remains after coagulation uh, has been done and the clot has been removed. So whatever, uh, what, whatever uh, clot has been formed due to the coagulation process, when that is removed out, the liquid portion which remains is called as the serum. So in simple terms, serum would be the plasma which is uh, which has been obtained or the plasma content after the uh, clotting process. Okay. So the plasma content after the clotting process will no longer be termed as plasma. You can't call it plasma anymore. So we have to give it a new term which is which is the serum. Okay. So the liquid portion remaining after the clot is removed. So that is serum. Now, if we physically look at um, or physically examine the plasma, it would be uh, hazy. It would be hazy. It's not a clear solution. It's not a clear fluid. It's hazy and it is yellow in color. Now, what does it contain? So it contains coagulation proteins. It has hormones, enzymes, lipids, salts. Okay, and it has around 90% water. So that's the plasma. So serum, so when we look into the serum, so as I said serum is the, the liquid portion which has been obtained after the co uh, clotting factors have been removed. So serum would ideally be clear, okay, straw colored, that means very uh, pale yellow like straw color and then it, ha it, is, it does not have coagulation proteins. 
So serum is more clear, clearer than plasma. It is straw colored, whereas plasma was uh, yellow color. And serum does not have coagulation factors, whereas plasma has coagulation factors. So we're going to look into some of the terms that we frequently come across in hematology. So these are basically terms which would serve as like maybe the prefix or the suffix and which would give that term uh, or that word a meaning, right? So uh, it is important to know the uh, meanings of these words because the the main word, uh, the, the meaning of the main word would depend upon the meaning of these uh, terminologies, okay? So let us look into the different terms that we come across frequently. Just A, adding an A before a term would mean that there is an absence. So A means without. For example, anemia, okay? Amia will come later, we will see that it means blood. So anemia means without blood. That means the blood content or the hemoglobin content of the person is less or extremely low, okay? So that is A. A means without. Then blast. Blast means young or nucleated okay leucoblast or if you say myeloblast okay so it means young or nucleated so it refers to the young or nucleated uh, cells so site means cell okay leukocyte that means cell then chromic means color chromic means color this means abnormal okay dysuria like that so we say it is a little uh, the the there is, it is different from the normal so it is abnormal so the word dis means abnormal emia means blood okay uh, as I said an amia so without blood without hemoglobin so amia means blood then ferro means iron hyper means increase hypo means decrease iso means equal like when we say isotonic so the os there is no change in the osmosis it's equal both the solutions. Um, from the different uh, which are present on either sides of the uh, semi permeable membrane they both have the same isotonicity okay so the isotonic means same isothermal means same temperature so iso means equal macro means large micro means small milo means marrow okay milo means marrow bone marrow milo is marrow mega is large Normo means normal, oid means like, okay, myeloid, okay, so myeloid, so that means from um, the bone referring to the marrow, myeloid, osis means increase, osmosis, okay, osis means increased, so pinea means decrease, plasia means formation, okay, plasia means formation, poesis means cell production hematopoiesis okay so poiesis means cell formation plasmia means plasia means uh, pinea means decrease plasia means formation poiesis means cell production hematopoiesis so cell production poly means many pro means before okay poly means many pro means before poiesis means cell production plasia means formation Pinea means decrease, okay? Now, let's look into the formed elements and their sizes. So, the different cellular components in brief, we will look into all of this in detail. <coughs> we will check about all these cells in detail, but here we just want to see their size and their shapes, okay? Uh, a very uh, basic picture of their size and their shapes. So, thrombocytes or platelets will be between 2 to 4 micrometers in, in their size. So they are very small compared to the other uh, cells of the blood, blood and they are disc shape, okay, thrombocytes are disc shape, size between 2 to 4 micrometers. So erythrocytes is 7 to 8 uh, micrometers, it is biconcave. So thrombocytes is smaller than the erythrocytes, it is between 2 to 4 micrometers and it has got disc shape, whereas erythrocytes are between size, uh, they have the size between 7 to 8 micrometers and they are biconcave. Let's look into normal lymphocytes. Normal lymphocytes would have the size between 6 to 9 micrometers and they're basically round shapes, okay? Then atypical lymphocytes, that means which is varying or which is different from the normal lymphocyte, 
their size will be larger than the normal lymphocytes it will be between 10 to 22 micrometers and then it will be variable or irregular the size will not be a correct circle uh, circular shape the size is going to be irregular and the, uh, the, uh, the shape is going to be irregular whereas the size is between 10 to 22 micrometers let us look into a basophil basophil size would range from 8 to 10 micrometers and it is round okay a basophil is basically round it's between 8 to 10 micrometers neutrophils is between 10 to 15 micrometers and it is round then band neutrophil is between 10 to 15 micrometers and that's also round okay so basophils will be 10 to 8 to 10 micrometers neutrophils is a little more larger it's between 10 to 15 micrometers and both of them are round let's look into eosinophil eosinophil is of the size between 12 to 16 micrometers and that is a round cell Monocytes is between 12 to 22 micrometers and monocytes can be variable and irregular in shape. So we are going to look into uh, different hematology stains. So we have the vital stains, we have the non-vital stains. Okay. So let us look into the non-vital polychrome stain. That means it will take up more than one color. So one very common um, uh, kind of stain which is a non-vital polychrome stain is the Roman Romanowski stain okay Romanowski stain so it is mostly commonly used peripheral blood stain then uh, it has methylene blue and eosin so it's a uh, what is Romanowski stain it is a non vital polychrome stain and it is most commonly used uh, in the labs for hematology staining purpose and it has two components methylene blue and eosin so let us look into what the two colors or the two stains of Romanowski stain will, uh, will color. Okay? So methylene blue part of the Romanowski stain will, will give color to the cellular components. It will give blue color to the cellular components. The DNA and RNA will look blue in color. Okay? Whereas the eosin, eosin part of the uh, Romanowski stain will, uh, will stain acid components. Okay, so it will stain acid components red or red to orangish color. It will be imparted by eosin stain and uh, eosinophilic cytoplasmic granules. Basically, this portion or this content eosinophilic cytoplasmic granules of the cells will be stained by eosin stain. So, it will take up the color between red to orange. Uh, then, methylene blue will color the cellular components blue, blue color. Okay. So, RBCs will get a uh, slight pink color by using this Romanowski stain. Now, we need to add a methanol fixative uh, while, while we stain, use that Romanowski stain in order to prevent the background. Okay. In order to prevent the background also from being stained blue. So, in order to prevent the background from taking up that blue color, we have to use a methanol fixative the fixative in this for the staining process is methanol okay then uh, to keep a neutral ph we use a phosphate buffer so this will neutralize the staining process so because we are looking into an acidic part we are looking into uh, methylene blue which can impart which is of an alkaline nature okay so in order to keep on the whole we need to keep the 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 staining process neutral so we use a phosphate buffer of pH 6.4 to 6.7 then examples of uh, the uh, non vital polychrome stains are Wright stain, Gimsa stain, Leishmania stain, Jenner, May Grunol wall stain okay so apart from Romanowski stain these stains can also be used as uh, non vital polychrome stain Wright stain, Gimsa stain, Leishmania, Jenner so, other examples apart from Romanowski stains are uh, Wright, Gimsa, Lishman, Jenner and May Grunwald. So, these stains are also uh, non-vital polychrome stains. Let us now look into non-vital monochrome stain. So, monochrome would be just imparts one color. Okay? So, it stains specific cellular components. It gives one color. Example of a uh, non-vital monochrome stain is Prussian blue. So, this stain is used to check out uh, granules of RBC cells, iron granules and granules in RBC cells. They are also called as siderocytic iron granules. Then it can be used to stain histiocytes, 
then urine epithelial cells. So, we to see iron granules in RBCs, in histocytes, in urine epithelial cells. So, we referring, we are mainly looking at uh, checking for iron granules, okay, in these kinds of cells. So, for that purpose, we use Prussian blue and Prussian blue is an example of non-vital monochrome stain. So, Prussian blue contains potassium ferrocyanide, hydrochloric acid and saffron in counter stain, okay. Main components of Prussian blue are potassium ferrocyanide, uh, hydrochloric acid and saffron. It also has saffron counter stain. Let's look into vital monochrome stain. Vital monochrome stain. So, this kind of stain is used to color or stain specific cellular components. And for this purpose, for uh, you, while using this stain, we will not make use of fixatives. So, so no fixatives are used. So, an example of vital monochrome stain is uh, methylene blue. It will precipitate uh, RNA reticulocytes in early red blood cells. So, we have another uh, vital monochrome stain which is a Haynes body stain. Example is a brilliant crystal green. So, brilliant crystal green will uh, using the brilliant crystal green stain or dye, we are able to uh, uh, in, uh, detect denatured hemoglobins. Okay? So, denatured hemoglobins can be seen in patients who are deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Okay? So, denatured hemoglobins can be uh, detected using the brilliant chrysal green stain which is also a Haynes body stain. So, basically uh, both the reticulocyte stain and Haynes body stains are uh, come under the category of vital monochrome stains. Let's look into some of the staining problems. So, suppose if the color that we see is too much of red Okay, too much of red color is seen uh, uh, while viewing under the microscope. So, what could be the reasons why too much of red color is seen? It could either be because the buffer or the stain is of the pH below 6.4. So, it, the, the, it is not neutral, it is not above neutral, it is below the neutral range. Okay, the pH is below neutral. So, the, or it could be because there is excess buffer that is used. It could be because the staining time was less. It could be because the washing time was more okay or it could be because the smear itself was thin or the stains may have been expired so these could be some of the reasons that we are able to see so much of red color uh, on the smear now what if the color is too much blue what could be the reasons that our slide is when we viewed under the microscope is showing too much of blue color what could be the reasons it could be maybe because the pH is more than 6.4, the pH of the buffer or the stain is more than 6.4. It could be maybe because we added, we have too little, uh, little buffer is there. It could be because the staining time was more, okay, increased staining time. It could be because the washing step was not done properly. It could be because the, 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 thick, uh, the smear itself was thick and there is or there could be increased protein content. Okay, uh, in when we made the smear, the smear could have increased protein content or it could be because low hematocrit values or the presence of immature WBC cells. So, all of these factors may be a reason why the stain has uh, is looking too, too much of a bluish color.